an average professional soccer slash football team with a 25 player squad typically suffers about 50 injuries during a season. This includes both minor and major injuries. For the average player per season, this means they will experience between one to two injuries, resulting in a layoff time of between 24 to 37 days from both competition and practice. Strength training has shown the greatest benefit in reducing the acute and overuse sports injuries rate by an average of 66% and is able to reduce the risk of sport injury by more than half. The article, published in the International Journal of Sports Physiology and Performance, titled Implementing Strength Training Strategies for Injury Prevention in Soccer, Scientific Rationale and Methodological Recommendations by Marco, Beto and colleagues provides recommendations for three strength training methods that soccer slash football players can use. The training methods include traditional resistance training, eccentric training and flywheel training. This presentation brought to you by Talking Sports Science will provide a summary of their recommendations for each of the three training methods. We will now review the recommendations for each of these in turn. Number one, traditional resistance training. This includes exercises that are bilateral or unilateral, with or without external load, free weights such as barbell, dumbbells, kettlebells or resistance machines. In terms of training intensity, loads equal to 85% of one repetition max and above are recommended to improve strength. For training volume and frequency, this differs depending on the time of year. For pre-season, a minimum of two strength sessions per week with a minimum of four working sets across two exercises. Using six plus repetitions per set is recommended. And during the competitive season, the same minimum dose of volume and frequency is recommended as the pre-season. However, as time is more precious and schedules vary depending on the number of matches played, a single session per week can elicit positive adaptations. In terms of exercises prescribed, players are required to be proficient at multiple movement patterns across all three planes of direction. Therefore, a combination of both bilateral and unilateral strength exercises is recommended. For bilateral exercises, this can be back squats and trap bar deadlifts. And for unilateral exercises, this can include rear foot elevated split squats, step ups and single leg squats. Moving on to eccentric training. The high presence of eccentric actions in soccer slash football, such as decelerations, changes of direction and sprints, makes eccentric training very appealing. Furthermore, many injuries in football slash soccer typically occur in the eccentric phase of sprinting, i.e. the swing stance transition period. With eccentric training, loads are prescribed above what an athlete can lift concentrically. This is known as accentuated eccentric loading. By using a weight release system or the use of spotters, accentuated eccentric loading enables the athlete to lift a heavier load during the eccentric phase compared with the concentric phase. The load is then reduced and the athlete can then perform the concentric phase. Therefore, load should be above equivalent concentric one repetition maximum during the eccentric phase when using accentuated eccentric loading. The load used will dictate the velocity of the movement for example, using higher loads incur higher velocities. Whereas Nordic hamstrings are body weight exercises which could also be performed with extra weight, for example, holding discs, to enhance the eccentric load. The accentuated eccentric loading training would be best implemented using cluster sets, with a volume of three to five sets using three to five repetitions. And to help reduce hamstring strains, Nordics are typically recommended 
and performed over one to three sets with three to six repetitions. It should be noted the intensity, volume and frequency of eccentric training needs to be considered in relation to the planned concentric training and vice versa, as well as the player's experience with this type of training. Moving on to flywheel training. Flywheel training has resulted in gains in muscle mass, concentric and eccentric force, changes in direction performance, running speed, as well as injury risk reduction. This technology allows the athlete to accentuate eccentric actions by using inertial kinetic energy that results from the unwinding of the flywheel strap. In other words, eccentric overload is promoted by using the energy stored in the flywheel system after a maximal concentric action when a brief and concentrated braking action occurs at the end of the eccentric phase. Intensity can be manipulated by different flywheel wheels, as this means different moment of inertia. The most common moment of inertia used, which varies according to the chosen exercise, is between 0.05 and 0.145 kilograms per meter squared. However, adjusting the inertia to the highest concentric or eccentric power output of each selected exercise seems to be an interesting approach to individually prescribe flywheel training. In terms of training frequency and volume, performing one to two exercises twice per week using three to six sets of six to eight repetitions is recommended. Although during in-season at times with higher competitive load, a single weekly session may be a suitable frequency. Regarding exercise selection, the exercises most reported in the scientific literature include squat, lunge, leg curl, rear foot elevated split squat and conic pulley unilateral hamstring kicks. The versatility of flywheel devices also allows soccer slash football specific multi-directional movements to be performed and the portability of the device to different training locations is a huge plus for flywheel training for the design of injury prevention protocols. And that concludes the three different strength training strategies for injury prevention in soccer slash football. Thanks for listening folks, see you next time.